Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Mm. Um, I'm just looking around to see if there are any strange people from strange lands that have made it into the South End Borough. No, I think we're all okay. Um, we live in very strange times, of course. Um, we have the privilege of coming here, though, together to worship God. And we have this privilege and opportunity to, to serve him in our own ways, in our own time. Um, Lois can't decide whether to sit down or stand up. Um, so I'm going to suggest that she remain standing and then we pray for her and the young folk that go to the uh, junior church. Let's pray together, shall we? <laughs> Father God, we thank you uh, for our children and our community. We pray for our schools, particularly in these difficult times. But we also offer the children who are here with us today. Uh, we offer them to you and we offer those who uh, share their time with them. Uh, we pray that they will know more of you and grow more of, with you in their hearts. So be with the lives of the others as they go, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today, the Church's special prayer, this 19th Sunday after Trinity. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we have our first reading. The reading is from Isaiah 35, verses 3 to 6. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Glory to you, O Lord. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. If not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Where you enter a town and these people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. Well, good morning. How are you today? Well, this is a good news, if you're okay, because I don't want to feel guilty. I'm the only one who enjoy here, like Reverend Paul said, yeah? So please enjoy with me. There are moments in our life when we ask ourselves, are we part of a wider reality just, or just an isolated moment in the history of the church, of the society? If we think in this way, it's because sometimes we consider that we are alone facing the difficulties of our existence. But paying a little more attention to the way that Jesus is facing the reality of his time, you can easily understand that no life is an island. Each of us is part of something bigger. At the first sight, Jesus' disciples seems to have the same difficulty. But Jesus showed them that they are more than that. When they, with their first mission, they will have the first understanding of the truth. Each of them is part from a plan. In today's gospel, we have the 70 sending of Jesus, not to all the city of Israel, but to every city and place where Jesus would come. Though these 70 did not attend him so closely and constantly as the 12 did, they were witnesses of his miracles and believed in him. As in the choice of the twelves, Christ has an eye, an eye on the twelve tribes of Israel. Here, he seems to have an eye on the seventy elders of Israel, who bore the burden of people along with Moses. The task of the seventy doesn't sound very inviting. They are must sent out with, with expectation of trouble and persecution. See, I am sending you like lambs into the midst of wolves. 
your enemies will be as wolves, but you must be as lambs, patient and gentle, an easy prey for them. Their life was put to the risk, but they must look about and see how great the harvest was. There was corn ready to be shed and be lost for what of hands to gather it in. Preparing this sermon, a story from my childhood came into my mind. And we, with your permission, I would like to share with you. One summer day, my mother planted a flower in the garden. She called me and one of my older sister, and she told us, please, water this plant and take care of her. She said, it is a special flower. We look at that flower, it was something like that, with two small leaves. We thought, what kind of flower is this? What is, what is so special with these flowers for us? It was just a small plant. So we let her die. My sister said, we don't have time to lose it here. We have many other important things to do. Because he said, I am seven. She was seven years old. I was five years old. And she said, because she is older than me, is more busy. So she looked at me and said, you should, uh, should care of this flower. Because you have, you have just five years old. And I suppose you don't have many things to do. I said, that's not true. I have a lot of things to do. And I, I'm not going to take care of this flower, sorry. And I left. And we didn't take care of her. And the flower died. We looked around and said, ah, there are so many gorgeous flowers in the garden. Nobody will miss her. But our mom did miss her. And she was very, very upset. And she told us, your mission was to protect the flower, not to decide if she deserves to live or not. And she was right. Our task wasn't an inviting one, because we didn't understand the importance of our mission. That small and fragile plant depended on our help to become strong and beautiful. The disciple mission is not an easy one. There is stress, tension, and great uncertainty. They must send out with prayers the necessities of the, of the souls of man. Jesus sent their in pairs that they might strengthen and encourage one another. The instructions here given them are much more the same with the twelve. They must not encumber themselves as, the, as if they were going in a long voyage, but depend upon God and others to provide. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. They are not to take unnecessary baggage with them, nor to waste any time on the road with needless conversation. They must go as serious men. The disciples must show not only their good will, but God, God's good will to all to whom they came. The charge given them was, whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house, peace be with you. In our days, sorry, <clears throat> In our days, 
We are the 70 cent in mission. We have to bring peace to all, to invite others to come and take the benefit of it. We need to pray for peace. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. It is an invitation, not only for the disciples, but for all of us. We are called to go out in the field, to take hold of the countless opportunities and changes around us, to bring glory to the Lord of the harvest. Our task, to alter a flower was too simple, and there was no time for that. We had to impress others with more spectacular tasks. We live in a society which loves heroes, the ones who make a lot of noise and spend a lot of time telling others about their heroic deeds but the ones who sacrifice their life for their family, friends, neighbors, the ones who suffer in silence in their room from disease and loneliness, the ones who lost everything they had and they work hard to find a reason to continue to live, the ones who lost their loved ones. They are not heroes in this society, just unlucky people. You may think that our mission as Christian is not a very attractive one. We would like to live our vocation in a more visible way, to change the world, to show others who we are. But from my experience, I have learned one thing. The biggest changes, missions, start with the smallest things. Think to the role of a teacher. He or she spends a lot of time teaching a child how to write and read. He, his, or her patience, gentleness, help the child to become confident and to love the new old. Our mission is to work in our community, to welcome everyone, to share what we have received, the good news. Through our life, we are invited to tell and show others that we are people of God. And there is no bigger honor than this. It is not easy. It forces us to step out of our comfort zone in order to find new and creative ways to spread the gospel. Last week, at the end of the lecture, the professor saw us tired and more confused than before. He smiled and said, no worry, guys, if you don't understand everything, because I have two good news for you. First, the one who believes in Jesus always will have a seat in front of the table close to him. Second, there are no reserved places, seats for VIP. All of us said with a loud voice, hooray, it's just for us simple and common people. Amen. Amen. And so let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received 
And this we believe. Amen. And so we sit for our time of prayer. We have gathered here to meet with our God in worship. Let us pray to him now. Lord, awaken in us our need of you, both as individuals and as the Church of God. Let no other issues sidetrack us from seeking you and increase our love and compassion so that we long to serve out your love to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those with political and military power and all whose decisions affect many lives. Speak truth into motives, honour into actions, and your vision of peace into every conflict. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our country as it goes into area restrictions to combat the rate of infections of COVID-19. We bring before you all people who will find this time difficult, especially for those living alone, for all whose jobs are at risk, and for children and young people that their education will be able to continue. Lord, may we sense your reassuring presence and know you are with us all in these difficult times. We pray too for all those who are researching the COVID-19 pandemic, asking that they will be successful in finding a way forward for all humanity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, that you may guide and strengthen them through their illness. We pray also for those who care for the sick, those engaged in the caring professions and for family members who look after loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, as death takes from us those we love and we find it hard to live without them, take from us all bitterness of heart and let us share with them the peace you give over which death has no power at all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful God, thank you for helping us to pray. Deepen our loving so that as we pray through this week, we may do it with your heart of compassion. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers. prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him up from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks, because you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, when once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. And so let us pray. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So have a good day, folks. Um, just keep watching news, praying for our nation, our folks, our community, our society and this week ahead. And so the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.
Amen.